Hello, my name is Scott Sheeter, and I'd like to welcome you to this back of the envelope calculator tutorial. Um, thank you for your interest in the tool. We here at the Energy Center of Wisconsin hope you're finding it very useful. This tutorial is designed to give an overview of the calculator and to illustrate a specific example of how to use it. Um, so what is the back of the envelope calculator? Well, it's a learning tool, and it allows anyone, not just architects and engineers, to understand the energy interdependencies between building components. The calculator itself predicts the energy, cost, and CO2 savings associated with changing the parameters of a building's design. The calculator works by coupling a location-specific climate data, such as what the, t what the temperature is outside, a few simplifying assumptions, which are all listed on the website, and the listed design inputs to calculate the building's load for every hour of the year. The HVAC efficiencies are then used to calculate how much energy this load entails. From there, we use a simple equation to calculate the building's annual cost and CO2 emissions. Uh, the calculator itself is not nearly as sophisticated as an eQuest or an Energy Plus or any of the manufacturer simulation tools and should not be used to make design decisions. Instead, it's more useful for just playing around and having fun uh, learning about energy and buildings, energy consumption, and also developing an intuition about the order of magnitude, savings, and cost for a given building. Uh, what are some of the interesting results that you can expect from the calculator? Well, the main energy results are natural gas and electricity usage on an annual basis, as well as the building's peak electrical and cooling demands. Uh, as mentioned previously, the calculator predicts the annual energy cost as well as an energy end use breakdown such as how much of the total energy use goes to heating, cooling, lighting, uh, plug loads, and fans. Also mentioned previously, the calculator gives an annual carbon emissions in metric tons of CO2. Here we see the overall calculator layout. There are the input sliders, which allow you to tailor the calculator to fit your specific building design. The input values and descriptions, which are controlled by the sliders and show the actual numerical values of the parameters of your building. An economizer on-off button, which just simply turns on the economizer if you, your building uses um, that control. A reset defaults button, which sets all the input parameters back to their original values an annual energy cost um, result, which will change as you update your building parameters. Similarly, this area shows the annual energy usage um, in both electricity and natural gas, the peak demand for both electric demand and peak cooling, and the energy end use breakdown in dollars. Um, here you can see the heating, cooling, light, plug, and fan energy end use breakdown as well as the total. And finally, carbon emissions on a metric ton basis. What are the general steps for using the back of the envelope calculator? Uh, step number one is to input your baseline building parameters. For new construction, that usually means inputting the local code minimum values. For an existing building, that means finding the as-built values and entering them. Once you have your building baseline established, Record the results for later comparison purposes. Then, step number three is to input the proposed building parameters. So what upgrades are you willing to make to the building and how will they affect the resulting energy and cost? Then record the proposed building interesting results and find the incremental savings between the baseline and your proposed. You can look at individual measures and find their incremental savings or look at a host of measures and find how those multiple upgrades affect the building energy use. So for this example, we'll be analyzing a collection of upgrades, so not just one, and we'll be looking at a 30,000 square foot new construction office building in Madison, Wisconsin. The building has metal framed walls and roof insulation above deck. Uh, baseline values will be entered for heating via atmospheric boilers, 
and cooling via an air-cooled packaged um, air conditioner. We will be using the economizer mode. The baseline building parameters are the defaults and less indicated here. So instead of the default values for window U value, we were entering a code value of 0.55 BTUs per hour foot square degree Fahrenheit. The window solar heat gain coefficient is a value of 0.46. The window to wall ratio will be set to 30%. The people density of an office is approximately 167 foot squared per person. And the ventilation rate for those occupants is, CFM, is 17 CFM per person. And then the lighting power density um, established by code for an office building is one watt a square foot. And like I mentioned earlier, this office building is 30,000 square feet. You can use the sliders to input these values. Specifically, the window U value needs to go to 0.55, so you can just click on the slider and drag it to that value. And similarly, the, up to the values for solar heat gain coefficient, window to wall ratio, people density, ventilation rate, lighting power density, and overall building square footage need to be updated. You can also enter these values directly into the cells that are controlled by the sliders. Um, this is particularly useful if, for some reason, your values are outside of the range of the sliders. However, be careful in that doing this will potentially result in a loss of functionality of the sliders, as well as the reset defaults button. What I would recommend is to always s start from the same save template of the back of the envelope calculator and never from a version that you've already changed. Now that we have the baseline building parameters input, we want to record our important results. Well, you may ask, what are the important results? Um, often it's cost, but that question is really up to you. The important results that I've recorded here include the annual energy cost, annual electric consumption, natural gas consumption, and the peak electric and cooling demand, as well as the total CO2 emissions. It's often helpful at this point to look and just do a quick sanity check to make sure that these values make sense. The annual energy cost comes out to about $1.40 per square foot, and that's well within the acceptable range um, of annual energy costs for an office. You can also double check the consumption rates against CBEC's published data from the Department of Energy. The energy efficiency measures, which will establish our proposed baseline, our proposed building's values, are going to be the upgrading roof insulation, establishing high-performance windows, efficient interior lighting, and high-efficiency heating and cooling equipment. In order to model those upgrades, we're going to change the roof R value from 20 to 30. The window U value would increase from 0.55 to 0.33. And the window solar heat gain coefficient will likewise decrease to 0.32. The lighting power density will decrease by 20% to 0.8. And we're using condensing boilers now, so instead of 80% efficiency, we've jumped to 87%. Purchasing high efficiency cooling equipment results in an EER of 10.5, which is up from 9.5. Here we see the new input values, which were acquired by adjusting the roof R value, or window U value, etc., to the new values. And now that we have our proposed building defined, we can look at the results of that. So here you see the result of our proposed building model, and heating and plug loads are the major energy and use characteristics, and lighting is the next one. But because we're in Madison, Wisconsin, cooling is not nearly as high. You can also see that the most electric demand happens in the summer, like you'd suppose, and the most natural gas happens in the winter. Very intuitive. We can also compare, um, not just qualitatively, but quantitatively, the same results between the proposed and baseline cases. And this table illustrates the baseline and proposed values for the annual energy cost. You can see we have a decrease of 15%, or about $6,200 savings from our host of measures. Um, annual energy consumption is reduced by 12%. 
natural gas by 24 percent. So you can see that our measures affected the natural gas consumption much more than the electricity consumption, which is important in a cool climate like Madison. Also, our peak electric demand has decreased and our peak cooling demand has decreased, which could result in um, reducing the overall cost of our initial equipment. And finally, um, our annual CO2 emissions have decreased by 41 metric tons. So that concludes this short tutorial. Um, to, to download the Madison version of the back of the envelope calculator, as well as climate versions of every major U.S. climate zone, go to the website. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at the listed address. Thank you for your time, and...